We recently got some new information about the current development status of the Xbox game Perfect Dark that was announced back in 2020, suspiciously missing during this year's Xbox presentation. That's because after three years of development, they're just getting started. And the ride to get to this point has been kind of insane. So if you guys like these news and informational videos, make sure to tap that like button. Let me know you want to see some more content like this. Make sure you stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. We hadn't even figured out any of our core game mechanics. We didn't even really know what type of game we were making. The developer who was formerly part of the initiative which was the studio created by xbox to create well perfect dark this is their quadruple a studio as they put it and we'll get into that weird naming convention within this video according to conversations with 13 sources familiar with the game's development little meaningful progress has been made on perfect dark since the 2020 trailer which funny thing that 2020 trailer was outsourced actually it wasn't even made by the initiative this is another example of microsoft and xbox jumping the gun when it comes to announcing games to get people excited about the platform because that's been the biggest pain point when it comes to being an Xbox player is that the games have been, well, a little slim. There's definitely have been some great games in there, but not as many as some other platforms. So when Xbox knows that they're going to be eventually releasing a Perfect Dark or Halo or Elder Scrolls 6, they announce it right away, but then you have years and years to wait for that game to actually come out. Though in recent years, Microsoft has definitely improved on that to wait till when they actually have some something to show to actually show something. Most likely that this trailer was more of a recruitment tool. This will happen with Halo Infinite. We're back in 2018 for Halo Infinite when that engine trailer first came out. They didn't really have the game put together like at all. It was more just a proof of concept kind of like this is the kind of vibe and thing we're looking to do. This is just so that we can say it's Halo Infinite in the job description without being so secretive and get the proper talent. And it seems like the initiative went about that same kind of strategy, which to them for development, it should improve things to get the right people in, but according to this news article, not so much. Problems such as fraught co-development partnerships and pandemic, technological challenges and ongoing exodus of significant talent and unclear direction from management keeping the game in development limbo. So much trouble in fact that the game is still two to three years away according to reports. So come with me as we go along this wild journey from the initiative starting out to where we are right now and it's a crazy ride. Ride. The initiative might not be a company that you're familiar with when it comes to developments because they were created by Xbox to make games, similar to the Coalition, similar to 343. And Xbox wanted a flagship title within every major genre, and the Perfect Dark game would be the perfect game to be the realm of spy espionage kind of games. And this studio had insanely high hopes. When it comes to the development of Perfect Dark, internally the initiative employees call hearing comparisons of TV shows and films series like Game of Thrones and Westworld. The former head of Crystal Dynamics, Daryl Gallagher, which you might hear about Crystal Dynamics a little bit later, states that he imagined a spy thriller with big, memorable set pieces, lots of physicality, and plenty of gadgets, all amid a hopeful eco-futurist setting masking a corrupt underworld. Several employees from the early days of the studio recalled the designation Quadruple A, being thrown around as to emphasize the sheer size and scale that they should be building, though there was little to no explanation what quadruple A development really was. So really, it's just a meaningless buzzword. I actually went to the Initiative's YouTube channel. It has one video that was posted four years ago, which is when the studio was first made, and it talks about just their hopes and dreams and ideas of the studio, nothing concrete or anything related to gaming. I feel like that video is essentially saying, look how big our brains are, trust us, we know what we're doing. But according to the reports, it doesn't really seem like that. Now the first year of development when it comes to Perfect Dark seemed to be rather normal, but as Perfect Dark moved into its second and third year, sources say that it began to drag on much longer than expected as leadership's refusal to commit to any specific ideas or shape of the game began to frustrate both teams. Both teams as in the initiative and certain affinity. Yeah, that certain affinity that's supposedly working on the Tonka Battle Royale mode for Halo, done a bunch of work with Call of Duty and various other games, and then to work on Perfect Dark, which would be like a espionage shooter kind of thing, which I can see the similarities as you're most likely shooting guns in there, but it's definitely gonna be a different feel. And apparently this co-development with certain affinity and the initiative was just rocky from the beginning, and it just got to the point where they just had to cut ties and leave. A big 
fundamental difference between the two studios is that Surgeon Infinity was much more of a support studio. They would say like, hey, tell us what you want and we'll make it, where the initiative was more like, hey, can you help us create some things we don't really know what we want? The initiative was a very small studio still hiring people, while Surgeon Infinity, very large, very established company with a lot more people working for them than after the initiative. But as the initiative was growing and hiring people, they were kind of doubling up on the same positions that Surgeon Infinity was already doing. So you had a mishmash of people still at the same senior level, but then clashing about like what is actually their roles. So you can imagine a lot of miscommunication happening. A former developer was quoted saying, it was not that we didn't know what we wanted. It was that we kept making things that weren't what we wanted. We'd do it over and over again. The levels we had when I left weren't the same ones we had three months prior or three months prior to that. I don't know why people just kept hitting the reset button. That definitely was contributing to the feeling that we weren't making any progress. It's crazy to think how much this is being mismanaged and lack of vision when a lot of people who are part of the initiative came from very established studios. They made amazing games and are definitely familiar with the process of de game development. So with development still in limbo, restarting the game over and over again, the pandemic hit and it was a major morale killer to the company. I blame the initiative. I don't blame our development partners. We chose not to hold anyone accountable to the vision and we just let people keep trying things. Yeah, people were all over the place. It was just a giant game of telephone. Essentially what would happen is that a developer would say this, pass it on to the manager, the manager would pass it on to somebody else and pass it on to somebody else. And by the time we got to the person that the information needed to get to, well, the story completely changed. That's the whole telephone analogy. It's uh, yeah, not good. Just a few months after the trailer reveal in 2020, the initiative and certain affinity were able to put together like a vertical slice of what Perfect Dark is. Very unfinished, but it was kind of just prototypes, give you proof of concept. While a major milestone, the developers that made this game were just not very happy with it. And soon after that, certain affinity decided to not renew their contract for another year with the initiative. But just before that vertical slice was revealed to the internal development teams, Perfect Dark design director Drew Murray left the studio to return to his former employer of Insomniac Games. And once that one domino fell, all the other ones fell in place. According to LinkedIn, it reveals at least 35 total departures in 2021 alone, and another 12 departures in the first third of 2022. Rough estimates from sources suggest that half of the initiative was just gutted, like people were just gone, got down to the low 30s. With morale super low, development not really moving anywhere, management not having clear vision and what they want this game to be, people just kind of started to leave. One developer says they literally were doing nothing for almost nine months as they were waiting on positions to be filled and key decisions to be made. During that time, it was just really hard for the team themselves because you would show people making progress with the game, like this new bump mapping, this new lighting system, and then you would hear like two and three more people just left. It got so bad that apparently Matt Booty, one of the Microsoft Studio heads, had to go and make a pep talk to them just to keep them motivated, like, you're doing a great job, you guys can do it. Though with most of the talent gone from the initiative, Certain Infinity leaves the project, the initiative studio head goes back to his former employer, Crystal Dynamics, and goes, hey, do you guys wanna help us out make this game while you make Tomb Raider? And so they did. So Crystal Dynamics is now co-developing Perfect Dark along with the initiative. So with the initiative still holding onto that vertical slice, they handed it over to the people at Crystal Dynamics, and apparently the game was a bit of a mess. And around that point is when the initiative decided to opt in to jump to the Unreal 5 engine, again, hitting the reset button with Crystal Dynamics on board. With Crystal Dynamics, again, very similar to Certain Affinity being an established studio that is well staffed, they decided to take on more responsibilities with the project, filling in the missing leadership roles at the initiative. But this again, led to more disagreements and infighting in the departments because while well, the initiative's like, well, this is our game, but Crystal Dynamics is like, well, you don't have anyone to make this game. We're here for you. This just comes off as mismanagement 101 really like it's just such a mess of trying to figure out who does what where and how some people might call this development hell but it's not really development hell because there really hasn't really been much of development to be done with the game it's still in the beginning phases like we said earlier in the video we're at least two three years away from this game actually being released in a conversation with matt booty one of the heads at microsoft he did affirm that crystal dynamics and the initiative have quote hit the rhythm when it comes to perfect dark and saying he had 
had a full review of the game back in May. It seems like the lines between the two development teams are blurred as Booty states that the two studios are not really separate but more just like the perfect dark team. Going with this code development style when it comes to studios is a little bit of a new ground when it comes to game development but it seems to be working out now as there is a bit more forward momentum happening with Perfect Dark. They're still in pre-production but things seem to be making progress now. But like I mentioned earlier that they were looking to do something large scale like Game of Thrones in Westworld well it seems like this game might be coming out in more episodic fashion so we might be getting smaller bits of what Perfect Dark's full game might be but released over time rather than waiting for the entire thing to come out because I'm sure Microsoft has become a little impatient when it comes to Perfect Dark's release. With how agile game development is nowadays you never know the episodic format could work but maybe once every year two years or something like that you get a new Perfect Dark campaign to play through. In Xbox Microsoft are still going through their lazy affair kind of approach when it comes to management where they're not necessarily you know telling them directly what to do and how to make their games they're just making sure that the studios keep on track to hit their deadlines but they're not really getting their hands dirty in the process. So let's hope that Crystal Dynamics and the initiative can get a good rhythm when it comes to making this game because I'm really looking forward to Perfect Dark. I have fond memories of playing the original on the Nintendo 64 which funny thing is about Perfect Dark is that the reason why it was Perfect Dark is because Rare actually lost the license to make a game with James Bond on the name because they wanted to make GoldenEye 64 2. That's why the two games are so familiar yet so different. So out of limitations sometimes comes innovation. Let's just hope that the next time we hear some news about Perfect Dark, it's some good news.